I, uh, I would like to welcome all of you to our Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Taylor Randall and I am the Dean of the Business School. Um, there are a number of people I would like to welcome. First of all, I'd like to welcome our new president, uh, David Pershing. Thank you for being with us here today. Second, I'd like to welcome Jim Sorensen and his guests. We will be honoring Jim today. It's a big relief when I see our honoree shows up for these events. So thank you for being here. Please enjoy lunch. Uh, as we get closer to dessert, I'll be up and we'll begin the formal program. Thanks for coming. I hope you've enjoyed your lunch. Is that a little, is that a little loud? Did that wake some of you up? You never know how the microphone's going to react. The purpose of the David Eccles School of Business Hall of Fame is to recognize individuals who have made remarkable contributions to the business community. Um, we are pleased today to have a number of our prior recipients here, and I don't want to surprise them, but I'd like them to stand so that we can uh, recognize them. Uh, Bill Child, Scott Parker, Dr. Rodney Brady, and Spencer Fox Eccles. I love this event because I, as a dean, get to um, politely brag about our alumni network and the remarkable, the remarkable group of individuals that we actually have that are associated with our school, and it's wonderful to have uh, these four past recipients here. Today, uh, this event has a number of sponsors, and so I'd like to thank them as well. The George S. and Dolores Story Eccles Foundation, Roger Carter, who's with Merrill Lynch, Joseph Sorensen and Tim Fenton, Ancestry.com, Brandon J. Fugel, Beverly Taylor Sorensen, Ray Quinney Nebaker, Sorensen Capital, Sorensen Media, and we have many other table sponsors. Thank you very much for being here today. The program will proceed as follows. I'm going to introduce a couple of speakers and then we'll have the formal award uh, presentation. With the permission of Peter, um, I have been given the liberty of trying to pronounce his last name. Um, and in fact, he's told me there are at least five to six different ways uh, to pronounce it. And he'll give the correct pronunciation uh, after I butcher it. Um, I'd like to welcome Peter Chotty. Um, to share some thoughts about Jim. Uh, Peter is the president and CEO of Sorensen Media and a 20-year veteran of the digital media uh, industry. Please welcome Peter Chotty. You were too easy on me. Sorry. You pronounced it correctly. That doesn't happen too often. Thank you, Dean Randall. Ladies and gentlemen, I am humbled, truly humbled, and honored to be here to represent the business community as we celebrate Jim Sorensen and his introduction to the Eccles School of Business Hall of Fame. In the course of Jim's career so far, a career which follows an amazing path of success after success, Jim has touched and influenced the lives of hundreds of businesses and literally thousands of entrepreneurs. I am fortunate very fortunate to be one of them. And I'm doubly fortunate to run a company that Jim founded and bears the Sorensen name. That is a tremendous honor. It is also a tremendous responsibility and tremendous bar to live up to. The Jim Sorensen standard is a very high one. It is very fair, mind you, but it is also very high. We at Sorensen Media hold that very near and dear to us. We strive to meet that standard each and every day. 
Since I'm here to represent the business community, I will focus on this one facet of the man, whom I, whom I respect incredibly. I will focus on his business career, and in, in particular, the way he approaches business. That is what I think is most enlightening as we gather here today. I have now worked closely with Jim for over three years, which gives me a very good window on the man. I've seen him in action. I've seen how he considers. I've seen how he decides, I've seen how he interacts with people, and more importantly, how he thinks of people. Given the brevity of time, I will not even try to address all of Jim's other pursuits, including his incredible generosity as a philanthropist. That's a whole other topic, but one that illuminates the man and how he approaches all aspects of his life. In the immortal words of one of my favorite plays, Dickens' A Christmas Carol, Jim lives the adage that mankind is his business. He looks outside of himself because a central passion of his is to find ways to improve the lives around him. And that gets, be gets me back to the central theme on which I want to focus my remarks and hopefully bring some illumination to you who have not yet had an opportunity to work closely with him. That theme is this. What does the word success mean in the business world? And in particular, how does Jim Sorensen define business success for himself, approach the world of business, and light the way for others to deepen their meaning of success? And here's the fundamental truth that I see from Jim. I hear it in his words, and I see them in his actions every day. And that is that the world of business is more than merely the blind pursuit of financial gain. And success, is more than merely the achievement of financial gain. Calling all you readers of business books out there, you heard me right. True success in business means so much more. If you ever read anything else, toss that book away. Now, don't get me wrong. Financial rewards are a significant motivator and are meaningful to us all. It helps me fund precious journeys with my family abroad. My wife, Louisa, is here with me today. But it is the day-to-day -day journey it's the why and the how you do what you do that matters most. And by this more enlightened, broader definition of success, which is Jim's example, financial rewards as a scorecard of success are more likely to follow. Jim's example in the business world demonstrates that success, in the true meaning of the word, is following your passion. Passion is a deep internal drive that comes from within. Real entrepreneurs have it, Jim has it in spades. Passion means deep intellectual curiosity. It means unbridled creativity. Passion means a quest to continuously learn and to improve. Passion means a relentless drive to reach ever higher goals, most of which are not financial. And passion means that the underlying drive is real and generates great positive energy that others can feel and, move, and be moved to do great things things that are bigger than any single individual. By this true measure, Jim is wildly successful. And because of his passion for business, his continuous string of scorecard business wins is not surprising. OK, I can imagine some of you perhaps thinking, well, what does that really mean? We want to hear you tick off certain achievements from his lengthy business scorecard. To that, I say I understand it. I will, and I will rattle off a few of those victories. But the list is long, and the how and the why, to me, are much more interesting. Here's what I mean. Jim oversees very significant business pursuits, as you know. Less than two months ago, he had yet another big scorecard win when MediConnect was acquired for $370 million. MediConnect folks are here today, congratulations. Another one of his many big financial wins was Ancestry.com's $100 million IPO in 2009, which would not have been possible unless Jim, Jim believed in it and led the company's earlier investment. Even for my company, Sorensen Media, Jim already has scored a landmark win with the spin-out of now independent Sorensen Communications. And I think we have Sorensen Communications folks here today as well. 
huge wins by any standard measure of business, business success. But what makes them truly meaningful as measures of success are that each of them reflects Jeep's, Jim's deep-seated passion to develop and harness revolutionary technology to improve lives in fundamental ways. MediConnect is transforming the healthcare industry by giving patients revolutionary access to their medical records so that they and their families can live better, healthier lives. Ancestry.com gives each of us a never-before-possible window and connection to our families and our past, to who we are. Sorensen Communication, via its revolutionary video technology, gives the deaf community an ear and voice to participate in everyday moments in life, in fundamental ways that many of us take for granted. These businesses, Jim's businesses, developed empowering technology. They make life better for millions of people. And while my company, Sorensen Media, has an extremely storied past, it is still relatively small compared to those and many of Jim's other business pursuits. And let's face it, Jim is a busy guy. Nevertheless, he always, always takes the time with me to advise me, to be responsive to my requests, and my countless emails from those of you who know me, to mentor me. And this is no matter where he is and no matter what hour of the day. Literally, I don't know when the man sleeps. And why does Jim do these things? Because he is passionate about our business. He is passionate that our company plays an important role in the explosive and revolutionary world of online video. We are, after all, the, we are, after all video creatures. The core technology that brought video to Apple, to Flash, to YouTube, to each of you, that video you want to watch on your smartphone right now, that is made possible by our technology. Jim is passionate that our company can benefit millions of lives to enrich, educate, entertain, and engage in ways never before possible. And he, like me, believes that we are still only in the early innings of online video. In a word, he finds online video empowering. We are visual creatures. So how have I directly seen Jim's passion manifest itself? Here are a few concrete examples from the top down, just a few. I could go on and on, but they won't let me. So example number one. Our company has an opportunity to win the significant business of Shutterfly, the leader in digital photos online, and transform that service into a video service as well, so that we can share and archive life's most precious moments. Yet we are up against literally a dozen other companies, including the industry heavyweight. A company, by the way, that just recently went public with an over $500 million IPO. I asked Jim if he would be willing to meet with senior executives at Shutterfly to help close the deal. And mind you, they are in the Bay Area, they aren't local. And without hesitation, Jim changes his schedule and generously offers his energy, his time, and most importantly, his passion for what our technology can enable Shutterfly users to do. As a result, Jim is significantly responsible for sealing the deal. And as a result, millions of Shutterfly users now have the power to watch and share their baby's first steps. That is empowering. Here's another one. We have a bonus plan that in itself is generous for a privately held company such as ours. But that isn't the story. This is. So it is time to finalize calculations and pay out employees who understandably would appreciate it. I naturally seek Jim's approval to the bonus pay payouts because he is my chairman. But Jim is traveling outside the country. Nevertheless, in my inimitable fashion, I ask for an expeditious response so that I can expedite payout. And Jim responds in record time, as always. He always responds immediately to employee issues. Why? Because he cares about people. He understands that these things matter. He gets it. How many out there do not? Here's a final, here's a final example, our interactions. Jim is generous with his time. Anytime I seek out his counsel, I receive it. And he does it with enthusiasm, he does it with focus, 
and he does it with respect. That doesn't mean that Jim always agrees with me or others. Of course not. The man does have strong opinions. But his reasoning and experiences are always rock solid. I always respect them. I always learn from them. Jim leads by passion. Jim leads with honor and integrity. Jim leads fairly and with humility. He leads by substance, not artifice. He leads by example. And Jim respects others. I've been around the block enough to see when leadership, if you can call it that, is done wrong. Jim does it right. That's why Jim is precisely the kind of man with whom I want to spend my business days and career. Jim is a true mentor. And being a mentor and having that flow naturally from passion ain't a bad measure of success. Not every business can succeed in the strict financial definition. Not every business wins that way. And tough decisions frequently must be made, decisions that impact the lives of many. This is the nature of business and the real world, after all. All true entrepreneurs understand this and internalize this. But every business has a far better chance to succeed in a traditional scorecard measure if it is firmly rooted in passion. And every business, every entrepreneur, can be a success in the true meaning of the word by following how Jim lives his business life each day, every day. Jim is a model of business done right. That's why he is, most deservedly, a Hall of Famer. Congratulations, Jim. I am honored to know you and to work with you. Peter, that was wonderful. I'd actually have you go another 20 minutes if you would, but it looked like you were out of, uh, you were out of uh, material. It's my pleasure now to introduce uh, Jim's son, Luke, who will come and speak to us. Jim, Luke is a managing director at the Sorensen Capital Partners. Luke Sorensen. Wow, I am glad to have an extra 20 minutes. <laughs> this is going to be great. It is such an honor to be with you today. Um, such distinguished hosts, such a distinguished institution. It's, uh, it's amazing to look at the list of uh, a past honorees for this honor today. Um, we've been to different honors over the years for my dad, and I can, I can say that this is a really big deal. We're so pleased, as his family, that he could be given this honor. And I have to say that I think you have made a terrific choice, that he is uh, very deserving um, and will reflect well on this institution. I've often been asked, what is it like to have Jim Sorensen as your father? And that's the perspective that I'd like to share with you today, is what is it like to have Jim Sorensen as your father? The, the, there isn't a real easy answer for that. There isn't one single remarkable thing that uh, my dad's done that has really distinguished him as my father, but it's, it's rather countless, small, perhaps seemingly ordinary things that in the aggregate make him a remarkable father. There are a lot of things that I've remembered from my childhood as I've reflected on speaking to you today. I remember doing a lot of fun things with my dad. He is very much a doer, and we still do those things today. Um, I remember having dinner with dad almost every night. And, and Dad, as you've heard, he's, for his entire career, uh, been running multiple companies, always had many demands on his time. 
But I remember dad being there for dinner almost every single night. Now we didn't have dinner as early as uh, most families on the block, but we did every night. And I think that's something that we really appreciate as a family, that there were actually times when he wasn't responding to an employee's email, that he was with the family and, and uh, giving his time to us. I remember playing catch with my dad out in the backyard. I remember countless times shooting horse. I remember playing tennis and playing golf, going skiing in the winter and, and boating in the summer. And we had a lot of fun. And I really appreciate that my father has used his recreation time, that discretionary time that he had to be with his family. Dad always held us accountable. He held me accountable. I remember one time as a young child, I hit my younger sister and my dad held me very accountable. <laughs> I still remember that today, and I appreciate that. My dad taught me to be honest and to own up for my mistakes, even and especially when it is difficult to do so. I've always known that my father had and has very high expectations for me. And even more so, I knew and know that he has the confidence in me to meet those expectations and that he would give me the full support that I needed to be successful. Above all, my dad has shown me by his example to work hard and to keep going no matter what. When dad commits to something, he commits absolutely and completely and there is just no stopping him he becomes an immovable force there's a experience I had uh, with dad that that illustrates this for me um, I think Pat Nola's here he, he may remember this there was a, a summer that I was working as an intern at uh, the business where uh, Sorensen communications would eventually be formed and we were investigating using the company technology to provide a, a, a nascent industry service called video relay service. And the opportunity looked very compelling and to be a good fit with the company technology. However, the industry was highly regulated through the FCC. And so one of the tasks that we had was to go meet with the, the FCC. And I, was, I uh, had a small part in being asked to set up that meeting with the deputy director of the FCC. And so dad set a date and he booked the tickets to fly out to DC. And I got to uh, tag along with uh, dad and Pat Nola, who's a, a great leader in his own right. And we headed back for that in-person meeting. Now, this may shock you, but the deputy director of the FCC actually didn't return my phone call and indeed never gave any indication that she was willing to entertain an in-person meeting with uh, these people from Utah who really had had uh, no business in that industry up until that point in time. And we tried to tell dad this, um, and uh, I can't remember exactly what he, he uh, said, but he wasn't real interested in hearing that we weren't gonna get the meeting set up, we were going. And so finally we reached the time of our hypothetical meeting. <laughs> and I thought this was going to be a disaster. We literally had no one else to see, no one, nothing else to do there in Washington, D.C. This was in July of 2002. So we went to the FCC building, a large federal building in D.C. in July of 2002. And you can imagine the type of, the, the amount of security that was there at that time at that building. And of course, we had no appointment. The building was fully locked down. The, the doors were all locked. There were uh, armed guards and metal detectors inside. And so we went to 
kind of a um, empty corner of the building and waited until someone with clearance either went in or came out so we could sneak in. <laughs> and this actually took us a few tries. <laughs> and of course then we made it in and, and uh, there's the security to get through. And at this point I'm thinking, we are going to make it to a federal facility of some <laughs> sort pretty shortly. But my dad was really undaunted. Um, he went in and, and uh, looked as though he knew where he was going and, and somehow bluffed his way through the, the security. We kind of got lost through the building but eventually made it to the right place and uh, got to the executive ass assistant of this uh, director that we had been hoping to meet and she told us I'm sorry you don't have an appointment and the director is unavailable you'll have to uh, meet with her another time and I remember uh, dad saying we've we've flown all the way from Salt Lake City and we'll wait until she's ready to meet and so we did wait for a short period of time and then they let us in and uh, they had that meeting and that became the start of something great. Sorensen Communications became the pioneer in providing video relay services to the deaf and hard of hearing. It provides a service that is truly transformative to a disadvantaged portion of our society and has become a great company in our community one of the largest employers here in Utah and, and employing many people throughout the country. That experience has taught me a lesson that my dad has taught me time and time again. That through perseverance, dogged perseverance, and hard work, you can do things that you may not even realize that you can do. I hope you can tell that I am incredibly grateful to have Jim Sorensen as my father. He is a man of integrity. He is genuine and real. And he's worked for everything that he's accomplished in this life. I perhaps selfishly believe that his greatest distinctions are not just in his business accomplishments, but in the man that he has been for our family. So I thank you today for joining me in honoring James Lee Sorensen. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Uh, it's now my pleasure to take a few moments to introduce my friend, James Lee Sorensen. You have heard his many business accomplishments. You've heard about his investments, MediCanect, Ancestry.com, Sorensen Communications, Sorensen Media. There are many, many others. You've heard about Jim, the person, and the father. Um, if I might just take a few moments to tell you how he has influenced our school of business and how he's actually influenced me uh, as a leader. I think you'll see some common themes. When I was an assistant professor about 10 years ago, I was approached by a group of individuals, Jim, Jeff Woolley, and Kent Madsen, uh, saying that we could revolutionize the way that we educate our students at the University of Utah. And it would be through a unique combination of providing real world experience uh, and academics. And the proposal to me was that we would start a fund, the University Venture Fund. And through that fund, we would provide students the opportunity to see investments as they moved along the venture path. Now, I had actually never heard of venture capital at that point. Um, I had actually had a rough time trying to get a textbook open uh, through, through most of my students and to teach them in that way. Um, but they gently guided the business school along and five years later we had the largest student-run venture fund 
in the United States and perhaps the world at $18.3 million. Now that doesn't sound large, perhaps for some of you, but for a group of students to run $18.3 million, that's pretty stunning. All of that started with a simple half million dollar investment from Jim and his father and a vision that education could actually be very, very different. That simple model is a model that we have now tried to replicate in a variety of different circumstances, where the, whether it be finance, whether it be marketing or accounting, it is that idea that is actually differentiating the David Eccles School of Business among other business schools. So he made that initial idea. He funded it, he seeded it. But I think what's unique about the Venture Fund are the observations that I've noticed about Jim with our students. Jim is a member of the investment committee, which means that at least once a month, he sits down with a group of students that haven't looked at all uh, at investments before, and he patiently begins to ask questions. No offense to the other investment committee members here in this room, but Jim is by far the most prepared of any member of those, of those, uh, of those investment uh, committee members. He questions them, he then teaches them, I've seen that time and time again, not only in that circumstance with the University of Venture Fund, but when he's invited students to his home, whether it's lecturing them and teaching them about some of the Russian art that he's collected, or whether it's out on the lake uh, trying to teach them how to water ski. Um, the unique characteristic of Jim the Man is he recognizes great ideas and then he cares about the people um, that are implementing those ideas. Please join me in welcoming James Lee Sorensen to the David Eccles School of Business Hall of Fame. Well, let me just say this is um, overwhelming to me. Um, uh, I am so grateful for all of you that have come. Um, this is, um, I didn't quite expect to have so many people and uh, this, is, this is really a tremendous honor. Um, it's also a little mind boggling to be in the company of the past recipients some of which are here seated. I mean, these are, these are legends, and um, I couldn't conceive of me being in the same crowd as this, as this group. Um, I am really grateful to uh, Dean Randall and to President Pershing for all those that, um, that have, uh, have thought to, to consider me for, for this role, and I love the university. Uh, this has been a, a great relationship for me ever since uh, I was here you know, some 40 years ago. <clears throat> I would like to pay tribute to a few people and make just a couple of comments. <clears throat> I suppose um, I'm uh, a bit like those that have come before me. Uh, I've been greatly blessed with a mother and a father that um, are true um, leaders, entrepreneurs, that are visionary, that are tireless, that are tenacious, that are passionate. All of the things that um, I think you think about uh, in people that make a difference in the world and, and I hope to be like them, I think back uh, just, I guess it was um, about uh, eight years ago, maybe nine years ago, uh, when my father received this great distinction. And uh, I was in my son Luke's position. I was asked to give tribute. Some of you may have been there, but <clears throat> I was a little odd at this great uh, honor to him and what would I say? And I'd been asked the same question that Luke had been asked. You know, what's it like to be the son of Jim Sorensen? And um, 
So th this is a bit of deja vu for me as I, as I go through this. And I just want to thank my mother and father for their great example. I want to thank the coworkers that I've worked with, some of which have been mentioned. Um, great, great business men and women, Peter Chotty, Pat Nola, uh, Amy uh, Anderson, to name just a few. Uh, I mean, I, I think I have a pretty good sense of opportunity, uh, a pretty good uh, ability to, to vision um, what could be, um, but really, I wouldn't be anywhere if I didn't have the business star associates that are the real stars, as I see it, that have the domain expertise, that have the abilities and the qualities to execute, that are just plain good good managers, and that's really what it takes. And, and my skill, if it's one, it, it really is recognizing that and pulling the team together and then and hopefully inspiring them to, to be successful. I'd just like to, to say that um, it's really interesting for me to see the next generation come on. And if I could do anything in fulfilling, to some measure, the, the great um, um, uh, tribute to, to this honor and, and, and the the uh, honor of the parents that I've had and their example, it would be towards this next generation and teaching them and inspiring them, leading them to be entrepreneurs, to be able to go on and do the, the, the same thing that, uh, that I've seen done in, in my life. Um, I think you've seen a pretty good example of that. My son, Luke, I'm so proud of him. He's doing great things as a partner there at Sorensen Capital. Um, I had an interesting experience this week. My, I had two of my sons come and that are working for me give me notice and they're going out on their own. And I, that, kind of mixed feelings, you know. Um, I, I hate to see them go, but I'm cheering them on because uh, they're to the stage where they can start making on their own some of the decisions that uh, maybe dad has, has, has been making. And, uh, uh, I want to see that with all of my children. I want to see them fulfill the, uh, the ultimate uh, to their uh, best ability that they can be. So I really want to let all of you know how pleased and touched I am, how, how blessed I feel with the good fortune that I've had in my life. Uh, um, I'd like to, you know, I, I couldn't even begin to, to take credit for for all of the great things that have occurred, I think it's it's been a fact of, of good fortune finding the right people and, and being being blessed. It's taken time. These things have not just appeared overnight. You know, they, the good things generally do take time. They take uh, small measured risks along the way. And uh, I've been fortunate to, to win more than than to lose. Uh, I hope that I can do honor to this great uh, tribute and thank you all for being here and thank the University of Utah uh, and uh, look forward to uh, continued service there and, and opportunities in the future that would uh, perhaps bring us together. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Luke. And thank all of you for coming um, to this Hall of Fame event. Um, you are wonderful supporters of the business school, and we look forward to seeing you more often. Please feel free to stay and mingle and visit. I don't think we have a football game this afternoon, um, but you're welcome to stay as long as you want. Thank you very much.